Hello everyone, welcome back to this video series on how to make a helicopter in Autodesk Fusion 360. Now I do appreciate that it's been a really long time since I uploaded the last video. I was finishing up my degree, I graduated, moved cities, and I also had to apply for a visa to stay in the UK. All of that is done now, so thankfully I do have some time to work on these videos. I'm also working on my music album and starting a podcast. If you are interested in that, please do check out the links in the description. As always, if you are interested in supporting these videos more sustainably and helping me uh, continue making these videos, please do consider subscribing to my Patreon. We do have two Patreons now, and um, it'll be really nice if you're able to like, comment and subscribe to support me and the channel uh, to continue in its journey to grow. Great, so let's get cracking on with the... Um, model itself. So the last time we focused on the horizontal stabilizer and what we did was we created the horizontal stabilizer with an H configuration. We only made half of the stabilizer because we can easily just mirror this and have it on the other side as well. Okay, in this video we are going to be focusing on the rotor section. So we're going to be making this um, structure over here. So it has one um, thicker member over here and we've got four members on the side. So similar to this model over here, we've got one thick member in the center and four on the side. After that, we have a sort of plate section over here. So this is a circular plate and we've got four extrusions coming from the side. And these extrusions are where the blades come out from. So in this video, that is what we're gonna be focusing on. Obviously, once again, just to uh, make sure um, people understand what we're doing here, this is almost more from a visual perspective obviously if you do have your own detailed design or your own design that you're working on please do consider making it more accurate than what i'm about to show you over here these are just fundamental tricks and tips that i have used while designing my own vehicles great so first thing i want to do is create an offset plane and i want it to be offset from the top plane and in this case that is the y x plane so i'm going to press oops uh, i'm just going to click on that and i'm going to drag it up and Basically, I want this to be somewhere around here because that's where our sections are going to come out of. So I'm going to press OK and we now have this plane that's midway in the air. OK, I'm going to create a new sketch over here and the sketch, the plane I want to sketch on is the new plane that we've just created. So I'm going to click on that and it's automatically going to take us to the top view. OK, the first thing I'm going to do is create a circle. So I'm just going to hover over to the circle tool, zoom in until I can estimate, actually that's a bad idea. What I want to do is actually find the plane of symmetry. So if you just hover over the origin, which is this black and white circle over here, and if I just, don't need to click anything, just hover over that and then, oops, my bad, just hover over that section there and just drag your mouse upwards. You do not have to click anything. And you'll see this blue line and this blue line is basically saying that that is the center um, of our helicopter. So now I can just zoom in while still maintaining that position and you can see it just snaps right to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click there and I'm just going to drag the circle outwards. Maybe I want this to be 17.5 and I'm going to press OK. All right. And now we have one circle that's over there. If I go to the top section, we can just make sure that it indeed is in the center and it is great. Um, one more thing that I can do is I can click on the circle again, hover over the center of the circle that we've just created and go up a little bit. And over here, I'm going to maybe make this nine uh, centimeters and press OK. Now, obviously, in the blueprint, our blades are coming out in this sort of X configuration. Uh, but what I'm going to do, for, just for simplicity, I'm going to make it a plus instead. So once we've made the circle that we have over there, I'm going to create circular pattern the object i want is this circle over here and the center point i want is the center of the previous circle that we made over here and you can see by default it selects the number three we don't want three we want four of these so that's what i'm going to do and i'm going to press ok what we can see here now is we have one um one member which is 17.5 and the other ones which are nine okay and once we're done with that we can finish the sketch click on extrude and obviously the profile we want to select is this one and this mm -mm, 
sorry about that. So just hide the main fuselage for now. Click on this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Bring back the fuselage. And now just go to the right profile and drag this all the way up till where you can see this. Okay, and obviously instead of cut, we wanna click on new body and press okay. Great, so what we can see now are these four sections here. In my opinion, they're a little too thick um, compared to what's in the blueprints as well as my previous model. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go back in time and edit that. Maybe, um, maybe I'm gonna leave the middle one as it is for now, but I'm going to reduce the size of the smaller circles. So what you can do is just go back to the timeline, right click on the sketch and click on edit sketch. Okay, and instead of saying nine, if you just drag this, okay, so dragging doesn't work, so just hover over the circle and double click, and instead of nine, maybe I want to say five, and hopefully the other circles automatically get smaller as well. Now, when I finish sketch, Fusion should automatically update the thickness of these members. So let's click on okay, and you can see these are now thinner members. Okay, so I'm happy with the smaller circle. Now, maybe I want to reduce the size of the middle one as well. So again, I'm just gonna right click on that sketch, edit sketch, and hover over where the dimension is. Instead of saying 17.5, I'm gonna double click on that and maybe I'm going to say 15 instead. Okay, I think that matches the blueprint a little bit better as well. So I'm gonna finish the sketch there. Great, so this is what we have now. Uh, maybe I want to edit it a little bit more. So I'm just going to, again, these are just refining processes. You can choose to keep whatever dimension you want. Great, so there we have it. So that is our first step complete. Great, so now let's work on the plate that goes on top of this section. Once again, I'm gonna to go to the top view right there. And what I want to do is just draw a new sketch on top of that middle circle that we drew. Okay, and what I want to do is create a circle that almost touches or maybe intersects with the center of all the outside circles. So let's see how we can do that. So let's create a circle by pressing C and hovering over to the center of the circle that we created earlier, and you'll see that it snaps right to it. Okay, and if I just go outside, you'll see that it's not really snapping anywhere. So that means we need to work on a bit of projection. So let's press escape for now. Let's click on P on our keyboard for projection. And to any of these circles, just click on the circle instead. So just one of them, and then you can press okay. And now you'll see you get access to the middle of that circle that you just highlighted. Great, so now I'm just gonna click on a new circle again, hover over to the center of the main circle, and just drag outside till we reach the midpoint of that. Okay, and I'm just gonna press over there, and you'll see that now we've highlighted this section over here. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to extrude this outwards a little bit, and uh, from that point, we can then extrude outwards. So press okay, and press E on your keyboard for extrusion, click on this, click on this, and also click on that. Okay, so we've selected the entire circle over there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this out a little bit. And maybe three centimeters is fine. Um, I'm just gonna click on new body and press okay. Great, so now we've come up with the center section over there. Okay, and let's see what we have over here. Okay, so uh, once we've done that, now let's work on these four extrusions. Um, it's highly dependent, again, because I'm doing this purely from a visual uh, perspective, I'm only gonna be following the trace outside. So once again, I'm just gonna click on new sketch on top of this plane that we created earlier. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm gonna create a new sketch on the cylinder that we've just created. Okay, and I'm going to um, we don't need to project in this case because it automatically detects the center of the circle. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a line. We're going to click on construction on the right hand side, hover over to the center of the circle and just drag upwards. And what this will do is this will act as our mirror line. And you'll see why this is a neat little trick. Again, just click on line and remove the construction because now we want the line to matter. Just drag outside a little bit and then drag upwards. Okay, and what I want to do now is maybe drag this a little bit below over there and create 
arc and we can say three point arc. So start point, end point, and point towards the arc. So this one, this one, and that one. Okay, so now we've created this little section over here. Alternatively, if you wanna change how this looks, you can just drag this at the moment and you should be able to um, change the thickness. Let's see if we can also edit how this looks. I don't like the way this looks right now, so I'm going to delete that point there. Let's try a different arc again. So maybe I wanted something like this. Okay, now what I can do is I can just click on the mirror tool and I can click on this, this, and this. Okay, and the mirror line is going to be this. Now you can see this is a little bit thicker than I wanted, so I can just press okay. And hopefully if I do this, it should automatically change the thickness. Okay. Great, so I think I'm happy with that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, click on Finish Sketch. And once again, I'm just going to click on E for Extrude. And I'm going to extrude this. Um, because, it, because we're already on the top surface, we want to now extrude down um, to where the base of the plate is. And as always, instead of cutting, in this case, we want to do New Body. So let's click on New Body and then press OK. Okay, great. So we have one of these, and now what we want to do is create the other three. So we'll just go into Create, uh, Pattern, Circular Pattern, Type, Bodies, and the body we want to select is this one. The axis we want to select is this circle, and you can see that it's already created three of them for us. Let's just go into Four and press OK. Now, obviously, these are overlapping a little bit, but that's not really a problem for me. Um, if you want to combine all of them, you can. So you can just click on Combine Tool, click on this, 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 and this one, and press OK, and that will become one. I don't really mind, so I'm going to press Undo. I just want to keep them separate for now in case I want to modify them later on. OK, so now I can go ahead and save this. OK, so the next thing we want to work on are the blades. Now, in the previous model, again, you can see that these blades are very, very simplified. What I've done here is I have one airfoil section uh, whose cord is parallel to um, the ground plane. And then we've got another airfoil section over here, uh, which is at an inclination. So what this blade is basically doing is adding a twist. Um, um, this blade basically has a twist, yeah. Um, again, this is more for visual purposes. If you do know your airfoil design and your aerodynamic design, and you've designed your blade uh, with different spans, uh, sorry, a different twist at different span stations, and a different sweep angle, please do take that into account. But what I'm about to show you can be used as a first step. If you do want me to make a separate video for you, showing you how to do that in a very detailed way, uh, please do let me know and I will try my best to do that for you. Okay, so let's go back to our model. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, draw an offset plane. So let's go to construct plane. And I want to make a construction plane that is parallel to this one. So I'm just going to drag it over here. And maybe I want this to be somewhere outside of our base plate. So if that's where our base, base plate ends, this is where I want my airfoil to start. Again, not very accurate, purely for visual purposes. And I'm going to press OK. Great. So I'm going to click on Create Sketch. And I'm going to draw a new sketch on the plane that we've just created. OK. It's taken us to the back view. So I'm just going to go to the front view and draw our airfoil from there. So again, what I'm about to do is a very, very generic symmetrical airfoil. You do not have to do this one um, if you do know which airfoil your helicopter has. Okay, so I am just going to do something like this because I know that that is my midpoint. Okay, so this is just our reference line. That is my mirror line, and this is my reference line where I'm going to mirror the airfoil from. So I'm going to do a fit point spline. Actually, no, I want to do a control point spline. I'm going to start over here and maybe just a very generic airfoil section there. And this line, I want it to be a non-construction one. Then I'm going to mirror this airfoil. So this one here, mirror line is this one, and we are good to go. So this is currently a little too thick, um, and I'm just going to reduce the thickness of this just by controlling these spline points. Okay, and we have one here, and I'm going to click on Finish Sketch. Great. 
Now what I want to do is create another plane that is further in the distance. So I'm going to create a new plane, again, parallel to this one. And I want this to be somewhere where the tip ends, so somewhere where my mouse is at the moment, which means I want my plane to be somewhere here. Okay, again, this is just a visual estimate. I'm gonna press okay, and we are now going to draw a new sketch on top of this plane. Okay, and once again, I'm just going to do this. Um, and what I want to do now is actually, maybe I want to project the sketch that we've already created as a reference. So I'm gonna press P on my keyboard, and I'm gonna click on this and this, and I'm gonna press okay. Okay, so what you see now is we have one airfoil over there, and we have another airfoil over there. So I wonder if I can just select this and move copy, and the move type I want is to rotate. So I think that because this is a, um, a projection, it won't let me copy it as it is. So if I just press on Control C, Control V, um, then it has created a new copy from the projection and it will hopefully now let me, there we go. It now lets me rotate it uh, in whatever manner I want. So once you've projected the sketch, just click on the purple line that you've created, press Control C and then press Control V. It will then create a new copy of that sketch or of the projection on the same sketch and that, and then you can manipulate the sketch as you want. So this is um, how I've done it. Let's see which direction uh, the blades should really be in. So I'm gonna go back to my reference model, which I made a while back. And in this one, you can see that um, I twisted the blade uh, anti-clockwise. So which is what I'm going to do over here as well. And I'm going to press finish sketch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loft this together. So I'm going to go to create um, loft. The first loft I want to do is this one. And the second profile is obviously the new sketch that we created, which is this one. Okay, make sure not to select the purple profile, but the rotated airfoil, which we had copy pasted. All right, I'm going to press OK, and now we can see that this blade that we just created is a blade that has a twist in it, and the twist is 20 degrees. I have never worked on it. I've not worked on helicopters that much, so I don't even know if this is a conventional value or not. But again, purely from an aesthetic point of view, it looks good, so I've kept it. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is click on Extrude, and I'm going to select that airfoil over there, and I'm just going to extrude this inside and see whether... Um, these match or not. So as you can see right now, the airfoil that we created initially is too high up and it's a little bit, uh, it's not going to merge into that platform that we created earlier. So what you can do is just um, visually check whether at least from the top view um, they intersect and they do. What we're going to do now is I'm just going to click on join and press OK and now this entire body is one body. So if I just go on to body 90 this is one single body. And simply, now what I can do is I can just move the body downwards, uh, down, so that this body intersects with the platform we created earlier. So I'm gonna click on body 90, press M, and then I'm just going to move this down a little bit. Okay, so that's a little bit too much, so maybe I want to do minus five and see how that works. That's too much, so I'm gonna do minus three, that's too little, so minus four. I think minus four is perfect. Let's just zoom in to make sure that is the case. And it is. So I'm gonna press okay. And I'm happy with this. So what I'm going to do now is, yep. So all I need to do now is just create the circular pattern and therefore we will have four blades. So create pattern, circular pattern, type is bodies. The object we want to select is the new blade we created. And the axis is just the circle over here. And because we have four, we're gonna click on four. There we go. And hopefully that will work. There we go. So now our helicopter has a rotor and blades. I can now go ahead and save this. So thank you so much guys for watching. Please do like, comment your thoughts down in the comment section below. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you do want these videos to continue coming, please do consider subscribing to my Patreon so I can continue working on these videos in my part time. Um, I am also working on my music album, which is hopefully just a month away, and I am starting my podcast as well. If that's something you're interested in, please do check out the links in the description below. All right, guys, take care, and I hope to see you guys soon.